So let's just talk about the first example. We run an experiment. We have a sample of food, and then we monitor the, uh, the sample of food for bacteria and see how many different bacterial cultures we find in the food after a certain number of days. And we run this experiment two times. So after one day of sample collection, we have one culture of bacteria, and then the other time you run the experiment, two cultures of bacteria. As the number of days increases, we have here eight and nine cultures of bacteria, for instance, as the sample days gets higher and higher. So the best thing to do in this case is actually try to, instead of looking at this, we're gonna draw a scatter plot to visualize what's going on. So the way we write this is after one day, we have one and then two cultures. These are two separate data points, two separate kind of petri dishes of food. One of them has one culture and the other has two. So let's go and plot that. One, uh, after one day, we have one culture that's on this axis and then two cultures. All right. Now, if we go to the next data point, after two days, we have two cultures and then three cultures. After two days, we have two cultures and then three cultures. After three days, we have four cultures and five cultures in the two different petri dishes. So three and then four and then five. And you see the idea here. As the number of days go up, then you can clearly see that the number of cultures that we record in both trials of the experiment generally goes and follows an uptrend. So we can see that it's a positive correlation. As the number of days increases, the number of cultures also increases. Now, it's good to know if they're correlated, but we want to, we want to use this data to predict something, right? So the question I'm gonna ask you is, how many cultures would you expect to see after eight days? But you see, my data only records up to six days, and this is what I have. When I draw my plot, I only go up to six days, and this is what I have, but, but it's asking me, how many cultures would I expect to see over eight days? I don't have any data for eight days, so what do I do? So mentally, what you do is you attempt to draw a line through this data, all right? And then you use that line to kind of predict something in the future or in the past, you know, to kind of make a prediction of some kind. Right now, the, the line that you draw through the data is called a line of best fit, right? Now, the way we're gonna do it here is we're just gonna do our best to draw kind of the best line that we can by eye. But when you get further along in statistics, you actually learn ways of finding the best, the true mathematical best line that goes through the data points. What you basically wanna do is you wanna figure out a line that goes through here so that you have an equal number of data points on both sides of the line and you wanna minimize the total distance of all the data points from the line. So you don't wanna have a line up here because all the data points is far away. You don't, want, you don't wanna have a line here because all the data points is far away. As the line gets into the middle of the data, some points are above the line and some points are below the line, and you can use statistics to calculate the total average distance of all of these points from the line. And what you wanna do is pick the line that on the whole minimizes the total distance of these points above and below the line. Mathematically, that's called a line of best fit. There's a mathematical way to find the best line mathematically to minimize the distance the points are on the upside and the downside of that line. Here, we're not gonna go through all of that mathematical rigor. We're just gonna say, hey, this is a pretty tight correlation. The line has to be through here somewhere. Let's see where it is. Down here, I've drawn what I think is the line of best fit here because you can see some points are above, one, two, three, four line, uh, points are above, one, two, three, four, five points are below, and some points are on the line itself. Now you could shift the line a little bit this way or that way, but it's not gonna affect it greatly. The, the line has to be somewhere around here because if you move it too far, then you're gonna have an unbalanced number of points on the top side or the bottom of the line. So this is what I think by eye is the line of best fit. And we can use this to predict you know, we don't have an experiment to tell me what happened at three and a half days, but I can use this line to predict what's gonna happen here. I can use this line to predict what's gonna happen after eight days. So how many cultures would I expect to see after eight days? I use my line of best fit, which extrapolates beyond the data that I've actually collected, but it's a pretty good guess as to what might happen in the future. And I can see after eight days, it's gonna be right up here at 12 cultures. How many cultures would I expect to see after 18? 12 of them. Now, if you look at the raw data and I ask you the same question, how many cultures would you expect after uh, eight days? I don't care who you are, it's gonna be difficult for you to come up with 12 because you know the numbers are just, they're just jumbled, they're everywhere. Like what happens at seven? What happens at eight days? Like how far up is it gonna go? You don't really know because you can't visually see it. But by drawing the data, drawing the line that goes through the data and then 
using that line to predict something in the future, that is, is, is the best way to go about it. And it's visual, right? Now, the thing I need to caution you is that this line, the farther away you extrapolate from the bulk of your data, the less and less accurate this line is gonna be. Right here, I'm at eight days predicting something. If I try to predict something at like 52 days in the future, then I would have to make a much larger chart and I would chase that line really far up. But the farther away that I'm predicting away from my data points that I've actually collected, then the more uncertainty I have that the line that I have is correct and that the trend will continue. Because I don't actually know if the bacterial trend continues. It might just go up and then level off or it might go up and start getting steeper, or it might go down. I mean, you, ha you have no idea because at some point in the Petri dish, it's going to level off. You can't just keep growing bacteria forever. Eventually you saturate the thing. So the farther away you're predicting or extrapolating from your data, then the more uncertain you are. When you're predicting something outside of your data set, it's called extrapolation. You extrapolate a, a, a data value. When you're trying to look in between your data points, like here and here and here, it's called interpolation. So this line of best fit can be used to interpolate between the data points you have or to extrapolate beyond your data set. Just don't get too far away from your data set because the farther away you get, the more uncertainty you have. All right, let me take this down. Let's do our next problem. All right, problem number two says, two building inspectors recorded data on the number of infractions found each month varied with the number of inspections. Let's do a scatter plot and try to answer the question. So here we have a table. This is the number of inspections done on a couple of different crews. And after one inspection, looks like there's five infractions and then the other crew maybe has eight infractions. And as we increase the number of inspections up to seven inspections, we have fewer and fewer infractions, okay? You're checking up on somebody more, it makes sense that probably they're doing a little better job. At least that's what we have here. So let's, uh, draw the data here, one comma five, one comma eight. All right, so we have one comma five right here and then one comma eight. These are two different crews. After one inspection, looks like the crew's got five infractions and eight infractions. Three comma three, three comma four. So three comma three and three comma four. And then four comma three, four comma four. 4 comma 3 and 4 comma 4. All right. And then 5 comma 1, 5 comma 3. 5 comma 1 and 5 comma 3. 6, 0, 6, 1, 7, 0, 7, 1. So 6, 0, uh, 6, 1 and 7, 0, 7, 1. So this is what my scatter plot more or less looks like. And you can see that there's in general some sort of trend downward. Uh, you can't say what is causing what, but it's quite possible that uh, with more inspections, the people are being more careful and so their infractions are coming down. So we can try to envision drawing a line through this data. Where would it be? The line couldn't be up here because then all the points are too far low. The line cannot be down here because then all the points are too far above. The line has to be somewhere in the middle here to try to uh, have as best, as best as we can an equal number of points on the top and the bottom. Uh, maybe we go through some of the points, but that's what we're trying to do. Now again, as I said before in the first problem, there's a mathematical way to calculate the best line of best fit where we look at the data points and how far they are from the line and we try to minimize the total distance of all those points. And there's a way to do that. We're not doing that here. We're just trying to, by, by eye, draw our best line. So it's gonna be something like this. If we reproduce the data, you can see that this is, a, a, by eyeball, the line of best fit. You have one, two, three, four points on the top, one, two, three, four on the bottom. You're going through four of the data points. Yes, this one's a little higher. But that's, a, I think, about as best you could do. You could tilt the line up a little bit if you wanted, but this is a pretty good line of best fit. All right, let's answer the question. How many infractions would you expect to see if two inspections are carried out each month? So you see, we have data for if one inspection is carried out and for three and for four and all this stuff, but we don't actually have any data if two inspections are carried out. But you can look from your line of best fit and see that the line crosses right here. So essentially we're looking at this little intersection point right here. Two inspections we predict interpolate that about five inspections will happen or about five infractions will happen if we uh, inspect two per month. 
All right, that's called an interpolation. When we look beyond the data, beyond the data that we have, we call it extrapolation. When we look in between the data points, we call it an interpolation. All right, let me take this one down and we'll do our last problem. All right, here's our last problem. We're recording the number of hours of sunlight that hit a glacier and the temperature of the glacier. So when we have only four hours of sunlight, the three different glaciers we measure have pretty low temperatures, but as we increase the amount of sunlight, then the temperature is generally higher. So this data makes sense. Let's draw a scatter plot and use it to answer this question. What temperature would you expect a glacier to be if there are seven hours of direct sunlight each day? What would you expect the temp to be if there are seven hours of sunlight per day? So let's first draw a scatter plot. 4 comma 0, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2. We have 4 comma 0, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2. We have 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, 5 comma 4. 5 comma 2, 5 comma 3, 5 comma 4. These are the three different glaciers and you can see that at 6 hours we have this, 7 hours we have this, uh, 8 hours we have this. So here's our data. We want to draw a line of best fit. Now the line cannot be here, that all the data is on one side. The line cannot be here. It has to go through the data, trying to pick the point, the, uh, the line that has more or less equal number of distance of, of the points on aggregate on both sides of the line. Now your line might be a little different, but this is a pretty good line of best fit. So the question is, what temperature would you expect if there are seven hours of sunlight? Well, you look at this and you say, well, at seven hours I recorded six uh, degree of temperature, and I also recorded 10 degrees of temperature, and I also recorded 11 degrees of temperature across the three glaciers. What I'm asking you is, on average, if I go select like another 100 glaciers, what would I expect their average temp to be? Well, you can see that some might be a little lower or higher than this line, but the line does go through this location, so at seven hours on average, I expect a nine degree temperature. So I expect nine degree temperature. All right. Now, some data points will be above and below, of course, because you're going to measure things are going to be different. But on average, that's what the data is telling me that I would expect. So here we have learned how to fit a line to data, and we've learned to make predictions with that line. I think the most important thing for you to know is it's a really powerful tool, but if you try to make predictions far away from your data using a line of best fit, then the error increases. So you never want to do that too far away, but if you're looking in between your data points or close to your data points, it's a pretty powerful method with a you know relatively minor errors. Of course, there could be errors, but you minimize the errors if you stay close to the data. I'd like you to solve these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll continue to build your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.